<laughs> uh, hi YouTube. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Hopefully you guys are uh hopefully you guys are practicing some self-care in some way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, I, by the time this comes, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say when this comes out, dude. It'll come out when it comes out. You guys made me fucking upload a four hour video of uh Bushko Tensei, so more will be coming out. Watch it on my own first and come back to the spot later. It's okay, Penguin. If you're uncomfortable with it, just put me on another tab and mute me, and then we'll let you know as soon as we're done with this one. Moving on to Made in Abyss, because we are doing Made in Abyss tonight as well. Um, but anyway, hope you guys are having a fantastic evening. Let's just get into it, man. I see no, no reason for stalling in any way, shape, or form. Let's just uh, kick some butt here. All right. Go in here. And let me know if you guys can hear it. Wow. 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 The symbolism in that. Fucking huge, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys are probably like, you're fucking overreacting. No, guys. In case you guys ever want to know, like, a huge symbolism for change, even in psychology, even in whatever, oftentimes, you know, they, they try and show it in the movies like it's a reflection of your of yourself, you know, that's like uh, the, the biggest symbol for a change or something like that, but it's not. Oftentimes, the biggest symbol for change or for, like, especially in therapy or in any setting like that, is looking at your own hands because that's the only way or looking not even at your own hands but at hands in general like it's the only way that like you know either you can craft the future that's coming for you or others can craft it for you how are you going to go ahead and take that future for yourself that's ooh, i got fucking chills I, I i got fucking chills just like seeing that shift from it's like peace to like whatever this is war looking thing and then like immediately looking at those hands coming up it's like he's bloodied his hands for so long that he's looking for a change or something dude immediately like if i saw this in therapy man someone came in and was telling me that they were like you know especially whenever you get better in or something like that right and they're constantly looking at their hands and they're talking about like um you know what where they come from and like what they've experienced and you ask them if they are looking for change or what the change that they're looking for looks like it's always in the complete opposite direction of where they've been and it's a, such an interesting interesting phenomenon that like it's like such a common uh thing you know to like emphasize certain things that like we're looking for a change stability uh, maybe even a home maybe trying to find the place that we find that we can go ahead and call um i don't know home a house something you know anyway sorry guys that just that just caught my attention holy shit my dude fuck <laughs> character wise immediately so this tall dude really enjoys being in war and doesn't even care about like you know sort of like the respect of a body or whatnot maybe because a shield wouldn't necessarily cover him in totality but it's such a normality for him to like be able to pick up a random person and shove him up against a uh, thing of arrows you know even if he's already like passed away or whatever that there's like no second thought to it he's like still continuing his conversation you know wild wild 
前は不老気が詰めてきたところで一気に戦線を押し上げるあのサイコロ頭なまあいいけどよでお前は敵の足を止める止めるってお前あんなとこまでどうやっ Right, I'm not taking them out like. This is Vinland Saga, and it's f fucking insane so far. Yeah, the armor works apparently. <laughs> He's in creative mode. Oh. If I'm thinking what the character might be thinking, if I'm putting myself in his shoes, psychologically, he might want a break. He might be looking for a break, so he might be thinking about, like, desertion or something, you know? Um, yeah, this is the first anime that we're doing. Um, because, like, logically speaking, we're looking at all the symptoms of change, sort of, like, not responding emotionally to battle at all, not even seeming happy at what's coming. It's like an arrow hit him, and he's like, whatever, dude. You know, I, I guess I'll just keep going. So put yourself in those scenarios. It's like, as, as an individual, you can probably tell that he's like, oh, you know, like, he's seen this hundreds and hundreds of times. Would you guys want that change? And what would that change look like for you? Especially if you couldn't escape it due to society. You know, because societal expectations is one thing, you know. Um, and imagine all this society pressure on you to keep performing, to keep doing what you do. But at the same time, you know, you can't necessarily break from that until you're dead or something like that. Watermelt arrow, don't don't you know? I didn't know, Dark Thug. Didn't the arrow disappear? The <laughs> I, I didn't see it, though. I didn't see, but it probably did. <laughs> Kane, yeah, probably did, mate. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the arrow. Fuck. Fuck, dude. La Saga de Vinland. Oh, gotta mute it. Okay, is this song a fucking banger? Sorry, guys, I gotta mute it because copyright DMCA. You don't want to get fucking copyright struck. I probably should have, I'll look at the chat because I don't want to go ahead and uh, get uh Here we go. There you go. Muted now? Yeah, that's why I'm looking away, man. I'm looking at chat right now. Completely. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much for letting me know, mate. DMCA, brother. Let's go. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude.
Yeah, I'm looking away. I'm like, hmm. All right, I looked at chat enough. Time to look back. Oof. There we go. Oh, could you imagine how terrifying it would be like in the early days to live in a like in one of the extreme biomes, like complete ice or complete desert, like or just complete jungle? Like, you know, that would have been a terrifying time, especially not being able to categorize like animals or different things out there. I, I, I ooh, ooh. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, ooh. Iceland. Nice. Ah, Torfe. Kitsujinai Sato, Chichimonega. Wow. Marukurando Adonishi, Wasira no Funeva Sarani Minami Ekudata. Motto Yutakana Tochigaru Kazega so Tsugete Tanata. Wow. So stay was you and Mitch Ketana. That looks... Yo, I'm getting fucking chills, man. Is he talking about like the American continent? Did he like you know? Did they discover the like you know? Is, is that sort of what we're heading at? Also, Leif Erikson, of course, my man, my man, <laughs> my man. Oh. Wow. It must be India, said Columbus, dark thug. <laughs> Is he Nino Sage? That's... ごめんなさい。レイフさんのお話を聞かせてあげたくて。真の戦士か。やっぱお茶はすごいな。だろ。いいこだトルフィン。わあ。今乗せたよ。今って。でも変。Somewhere in Canada. Wow. 
but also that those trips back then were so perilous you know because they weren't just like quick trips like from one place to another like you have to remember like uh, we're, we're, let's, let's talk about hygiene in general you know well, leaf erickson is yeah i know leaf erickson is a real person brother <laughs> but let, let's talk about like uh you know like sanitary needs especially back in those days while on a ship uh and not even like a modern day ship so like yeah you guys have to think about that a lot of times it was like you know, uh, I know some 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 of the old boats have like specific needs for that, like specific things for for areas like that, or it was quite literally like just pointed out best way best way to put it. But like dysentery, there's a lot of lot of diseases out there that could quite literally just take you out immediately. And doing a trip there and a trip back, and also like you know, sort of the I don't know how to put it like the germs, the bacteria that you could spread to them, that they could spread to you. There was a lot of lot of random things out there and. The best way I can put it is, and, and, I, and I love it, right? I, I I love thinking about things this way. It's like the fact that we might be the head of, yeah, the head of the ship, exactly. Uh, we might be um, a homo sapiens, but at our core, we are homo ludens, which are like individuals that play. You know, we are storytellers. Uh, and, you know, storytelling, especially back in the day, it was one of the biggest ways to go ahead and keep your culture alive, to keep uh, stories alive. And this is why every culture uh, relied heavily on storytellers, relied heavily on what would be like, you know, sort of like the first couple of uh, of actors, of elders, of individuals who were able to go ahead and retell these stories and tell new stories about adventures, about growth, about uh, legends, about what to be careful of and stuff like that. Uh, and nowadays, some of the greatest storytellers that you know are some of the individuals that can make you buy almost anything, you know, whether it was like, you know, the iPhone or random things out there, you know, and it's always really important to like, I don't know, appreciate the art of it, appreciate the art of storytelling, appreciate the art of individuals who are into, you know, just keeping, keeping that tradition alive. That's way to put it. うなのりは海と戦っとる。すごいんだぞ。やっぱね。ね。うん、<笑><笑> いくさにも行かない冒険おじさんの言うことなぞ。信用できてか。だ、だって僕の父上が戦士って言うなら本当だけど。ホールズ。こいつらバカにするんじゃ。ホールズ。こいつらバカにするんじゃ。<笑><
狭いよ。ええー、やだ。ずるいぞ。このベッドは僕が温めたんだか。まだお話ししてる。気にしなくていいのよ。心配事は大人の仕事なんだから。それよかおいで。姉上が抱っこしてあげる。<笑> So at least she still had somewhat of a healthy family. That's the number one thing that I was like questioning right now. It's like, how was his family dynamics at home? But it seems as though they were caring, maybe a little overbearing, which is fine because most families tend to be in some way, shape, or form. But still, like, my thing is growing up in a society where you're told all of these things, like, hey, you know what? Like, let me quickly change it to my face cap. Growing up in a society where you're told all of these things like, hey, warriors are important, or this is important, that is important. What happens if something major collapses or something major ends up happening?、Um, I, I, I say you get the Aaron effect, right? Which, in case you guys are wondering, what, what the fuck is the Aaron effect? If you guys walk, watch Attack on Titan, you get an unhealthy schema, right? An unhealthy belief system that that is the only way of life. This applies to anything in any, any regard, right? If you value something so high, it's called the parataxic distortion, which in short is pedestals. You put something in a pedestal and you quite literally like live it up there that if something bad happens to you, it has to be, it can't be because of your pedestal work, it has to be because everyone else around you is against you, right? So, it can literally push you to go and become something that you're not ready to become or that you don't want to become because of these hard held ideologies. And if no one is there to guide you or question you in the correct way, it can get even worse. And that's sort of what I was like, huh, I'm interested to see where this kid is and how this kid is going to try and develop in this world. Because, first off, it's a harsh environment that they're showing us, right? Second off, you can already tell that there's like this huge push towards like adventure, new lands, new warriors are valued highly, but that's in like most cultures back in the day,、uh, so on and so forth, you know. So I- I'm curious, man. This has my attention now. And Bonaparte, I believe so, right? There, there's still, you know, it's, it's not necessarily just like secret religions, but most cultures and societies at the time, if they weren't able to get their stories out in time,、uh, they got taken away with. What is known as time or history, or you know,、uh, whatever race or、uh, country took over them at that time, you know, it's kind of sad to think about. I got it, I got it. You guys are back. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh shit, dude. The past comes knocking too fast, brother. Too fast. どこまで本当なのどこって何じゃい全部本当だよじゃあさこの船に乗せてよ自分の目で見れば信じるよアホそういうのを信じるとは言わん船に乗りたいなら父上に乗せてもらえよ俺あそこに軍船もあるだいだ
六人の仲間は皆死んだどうしてどうして僕らはそうまでしてこんな北の島に住んでるのヘルガ湯を沸かしてくれイルバ怪我だはい Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I was about to be like, dude, I, I don't know how that, that guy held on. Even a little bit of snow, being trapped even under a little bit of snow is already like, you know, now imagine being out there like all night or something, bro. Damn. <laughs> also, also, if we, if we can touch on this, if this is anyone that actually knows like society or something in general, what news does this bring or what changes does this bring to this whole family system immediately? どうしてあんな吹雪の中を… たくさんの入江に守られたいい土地だ。だがある日、ハラルドという強い男が現れた。ああ、ハロルド。多くの者がハラルドの圧勢を嫌い支配の及ばぬ統一へ移り住んだ。バックデッド。アイスランドだ。嘘だ。おっちゃんはやっぱり嘘つきだ。父上は僕のご先祖様が逃げたりするもんか
あ、いくらってなんか。取るぜ。来てくれ。ハーフダンが。あ、ノー。連中また何か難癖つけに来たんだ。あんたじゃないと相手できん。いやつがどれがどうとか言って強引に上陸しやがった。レイフさんが間に
Yeah, about the, exactly the bad cookies. Yeah, about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, even before that school clock, you did have a lot of like, you know, I guess if we're going to talk about the American content in general, you did have a lot of like, uh, oh, I don't want to put it like tribes of war specifically with the Mexicas and uh, like other individuals that would go ahead and adopt, uh, you know, some version of slavery, not necessarily like the uh, big like dollar maker that the a lot of the trading companies were in the 700s 600s but uh before then yeah you still had different like forms of uh, slavery still active but not to the wide extent that it did become you know huh. <laughs> ちゅう、and kill each other for all of eternity. Honestly, direct, you're right. <laughs> well, my man ain't having that shit. くたばり族内に羊ハットを取るな。ち。いい取引だぜ。うそ。商談成立。トールズ。それでそいつの鎖を解いてやったつもりか。<笑> Fuck, dude. Wow. I, I have a lot to say, but I'll wait till we get to a good, like, rest point. <笑>父上僕らも逃げてきたのレイフのおっちゃんがご先祖様は東から逃げてきたって逃げてここに来たってああ、no、<笑> Red flag alert. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Your dad sold off a fortune to save a dying man. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I have a lot to say. I really do have a lot to say about that. First off, aside from, from I guess, young Thorfinn, right? Setting off the major fucking red flags that some major shit is coming, right? Because we can clearly see 
What does it mean to tied up to be tied up by the chains of the past? And that is exactly what was crossing my mind the moment that like they were talking about like, oh yeah, even though like you um you know you you're buying this man at such a high cost or whatever, um, you know, who's to say what's to come or who's to say like why are you doing that? He's as good as dead or whatever. Maybe in an aspect he sees a part of himself in this young man or in this man that's passing away, like the chains of the past or even the chains of time, if you really want to go ahead and do that, like, you know, time may always catch up to you on like the long game, you know, the way that you think about things, the way that you are trying to approach certain situations. If you've said something, time is the greatest teller of all and it keeps moving. You know, we, we keep getting older, but time keeps pushing and having this whole ideology as to like, you know, what, you know, even say putting your own father in that regard in such a high pedestal or whatever as to what of a man he is. I wonder if it's like, especially for young Thorfinn, if his father is taken away from him or his mother or his family, it's just completely ripped away from him. How would he be for the same thing for the sister? If her younger brother and family were completely taken away from her how would she react how would she survive what schemas would she take on there's so many variety on this i'm interested in this you know and we even have half then literally in chains yeah but that's my whole point is like the chains of like not even our own expectations can sometimes be unbearable uh being realistic sometimes those chains can tie us down into our own thoughts our own cyclical cycle of relapse and pain and all of these things until literally someone or something comes along to break it that is that is a very very powerful first episode and seeing the family dynamics seeing the power dynamics and the fact that they're willing to step up even for a dying man shows me that Thorfinn's father I completely forgot his name. Can it, can anyone tell me his his, his dad's name? <laughs> Shows me that like Thorfinn's father like is willing to step up in some aspects, in some regards, to try and keep like you know, I guess a piece of himself alive. Thor's okay, like the god Thor's, yeah. So I'm curious, man. That that was a really really good first episode. I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm curious to see how it all evolves. Uh, Yes, actually, Ponyesh. Exactly. I think Thor saving the slave was all, him seeing a part of himself in the slave, especially with the chains. Like, because, you know, Hafton said it first when he first came in, which is like, oh, yeah, like all human, the best thing that looks great on all humans is like the, you know, the the thing, the chains, you know, uh, best necklace, right? Um, and if you were quite literally sent to war constantly, what are you but a tool of war in that regard? You know, and that's that's a huge, huge thing to process, a huge thing to literally take in and be like, wow, 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 wow. And it, it's a form of atonement. Yeah. Well, it's seeing seeing a part of himself in it. And it's an attempt to try and like, you know, atone, save himself from the actions that he's seen, you know, that he's done or whatever. Huge. Well, that, that's why my mind is a little bit blown, though. I am scared. I am scared of the red flags that were raised. I am scared to see where this is. This will go, especially if there's a cycle of violence, because violence will always breed violence, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the number one thing, the number one area of importance to all of that, because wow. Wow. All right, with that, that brings us to the end of Villain Saga.